In this video, we will provide information and more details about the course Microsoft Data Analyst. I'm very glad to introduce our instructor, Dimitar Yonkov, who will lead the Microsoft Data Analyst. Please, Dimitar, introduce yourself, share more information about you, and tell us about your experience in the, in the IT industry. Hi, Gary. Uh, very nice to be here. Um, Welcome to everybody uh, watching this video. Uh, my name is Dimitar, and um, I am a Microsoft certified trainer. Um, and in general, I have um, more than 15 years of training experience across different uh, job titles and positions that I've had. Um, but I've always had the opportunity and, and I've taken that opportunity about training my colleagues. And it has been mostly about Excel. Uh, because it's a skill that every company needs. Um, and regrettably, it's not really taken in school uh, to the level that we required. So I started with Excel and then, well, I kept adding the rest of the applications for um, the Office products um, with Word. And then when we migrated, so everything started again. So we had to train on SharePoint and then OneDrive. Um, and now we have Microsoft 365 with all the online applications as well. And adding to that, well, the Power Platform as well with Power BI for analytics and business insights, as we know, it's all about the data these days. So very important to know how to present that data in a useful way. Um, and also based on, on that experience uh, and throughout those years in different companies, um, I also added to, to the list of uh, courses, the, the leadership skills, um, the soft skills, uh, and so on. So it's uh, it's been a great journey um, and having the ability to add and add uh, and being able to share that knowledge. Great, thank you very much. And the next question for you is, according to your observations, what is demand for such professionals like a data analysts? Right, so well, the demand is because of the amount of data that we currently see being recorded by different systems. Um, and, and we all say that it's all about the data, right? Um, the problem with that is that there is so much data that it's, it's hard to get the actual information from that data that will make our business successful, that will give us the right insights to, to follow up and, and do the job that we need. So the business analyst is becoming a more and more important position um, because of that ability to actually dissect the data, find what is useful in it, present it in a way that actually the directors and the management of the company will understand it, and giving the ability to the company leadership to actually make an informed decision of how to proceed further. So where do we go? Why are we taking this path or why are we making this change? So very important, it's uh, it's something that we're seeing more and more. Um, and, and it's not going to become less for sure because it's it, the data is growing, <laughs> it's there and, and for sure it's not going to change anytime soon. So. Definitely something very important to know how to analyze that data, what to look for, how to understand it, how to clean it even, because we know that with a lot of the data, one of the things that it's not clean, right? So the first job is actually to go ahead and clean that data, make sure that it contains only useful information, some actionable insights that we can get from there. That's very good information. And please tell us a bit more about the course, what topics will be covered and what practical exercise it will include. All right, well, it's it's a very complete course. So it doesn't require any knowledge about Power BI to start with that. So we will go through all of the basics until we get to the advanced part of Power BI. So it's First of all, we start about what is data analysis, right? What do we need to do there? Uh, why it is important? What are the specifics? 
then even before we get our data inside of Power BI, how do we clean it? How do we transform it? Again, how do we make it useful? Because many times there is a lot of data and, and sometimes we have typos, we have uh, some data entered twice or three times or more. So duplicates, so we have to clean that. Um, many times we don't, we have data that it's entered in the wrong format. So you have, you see numbers, but they're actually treated as text by the database and so on. So the first thing, the first step is to learn how to clean and transform that data before we get it into Power BI. Then it's about building the semantic model. So the semantic model is the base of what Power BI does. That's the connection between all of the different data tables or the different types of data, how we can use them, how we can summarize that data. And if there is data we cannot summarize, that's normally not useful for analysis, right? So it's all about the summary. It's about a year worth of data, a month worth of data, right? That we can get into there. So then we have measures, right? So it's also about how do we cut that data into different parts? How do we filter it? What is useful? Because many times with what we have seen is that people see so much data that it's really hard for them to realize where do I start and how do I actually filter this to make it useful? Because there are many things that you can do, but not all of them will get you actionable insights. Then we'll see what is the idea of the DAX language. So DAX is, you can imagine as a programming language, but it's specific to statistics and, analy uh, and analytics uh, within Power BI. So we use DAX when we want to do calculations, when we do other functions. Uh, imagine these are like the formulas in Excel, right? But here is pretty much specific so that it's more, um, let's say more focused on the capability of Power BI to analyze large amounts of data. Now, the very important thing about Power BI in general is that it can use very large amounts of data. We all know that Excel is it has a limitation, right? Um, even if it's a million lines, it's still a limitation there. But Power BI doesn't have that, right? So this programming language allows it to make calculations faster and in a better way, right? So we want to get additional information within our data. Then it's all about optimization, right? So we need to optimize that. We want to see that it's quick, right? That not only we get data, but we get it quickly. And when we update filters, when we update uh, different parts uh, of the semantic model, that it works really quickly. That's very important because otherwise uh, our report that will take five minutes to load, it's it's not something that we want to see. Um, then we'll see how do we design the reports. So once we get that data there, so we have all the tables, we have all the information, then we are going to design reports, right? So we get into the different types of visualizations that we have, uh, if they're going to be charts, if they're going to be maps, if they're going to be different triggers, uh, there are actually menus, actionable menus, drop-down menus, and so on and so forth. So all of these items we can we can insert so that we can make a very dynamic report. Now that's very important about Power BI as well. The idea here is to create a dynamic report that we can filter, that we can sort, that we can change, that we can drill through and get more details about the data. It's not about having a static page in front of us uh, like a PowerPoint. Right? So here it's all about the dynamics. It's all about getting the latest data. Uh, it's all about getting the refresh data. There is a way to automate refreshing the data if you don't have it connected directly. Otherwise, Power BI has the capability to connect directly to any database uh, or a website or any other uh, solution that will provide you data. So very, very important there to be able to link that information as well. Um, and design our reports in a way that, again, they are user-friendly, they are understandable by everybody. So whoever sees the report, they should be able to understand it really quickly, be able to read it really quickly, and get down to what's important for them, right? As opposed to just trying to learn navigation within that. So uh, designing the report is very important. Um, we spoke about the filters. 
and then analytics in Power BI. So Power BI is a three in one solution. So once we have, so the offline application, which is the one that we can use for free um, within our services and create reports and modify them and share them as files and so on and so forth. Um, there is also the Power BI online platform, right? Which uh, uses Azure as a background. Um, and that actually gives it quite a lot of power because we can use AI, we can use um, the ability to ask direct questions um, and the system will get the data based on our question, uh, which is very useful, very, very simple, really, um, to, to get additional information from. And then we have the mobile application. So every time we create something online, we can create a mobile version of it as well, a mobile report that we can then install as an application on devices for their respective users. So they will have a very quick and very specifically designed view for mobile so that they can see what's best and they can use it in the best possible way. So uh, dashboards there um, are the ones in uh, Power BI Online, uh, as we call them. And then finally, security. It's all about the security because even if we can see the whole of the summary, now some people will need to see the granular data behind that summary. For others, it will be only the ability to view the summary. So there is security there based on who's browsing that report, right? And what they can see and what they can do with the data. So a lot of, a lot of information really that we cover in those um, five days worth of, of, of data, uh, of, of training um, that we have. Uh, for Power BI. Actually, it's three days. Thank you very much for this great explanation about the course outline. And please tell us, how would you define the prerequisites for this course? What skills should potential students already have to get the most from the training? Well, as with uh, any analyst, really, um, what's important? Logical thinking, right? Um, that's, that's really the basics. So for us to have this mentality of, um, getting the data, doing the analysis and, and finding what, what clicks and what's needed. Um, then obviously as with anything that it, that contains data tables and so on, Microsoft Excel. So good knowledge of Excel, uh, I'm not saying proficiency, but good knowledge of the basics of uh, some of the uh, functions, um, how to work with the tables, sorting and filtering data and so on, just to know, because there are a lot of similarities between Power BI and Excel and any other spreadsheet application for that, uh, for that matter. So good knowledge of Excel or any other similar uh, is, a, is a good uh, thing to have. And understanding, so basic understanding of data analytics and business analytics concepts um, would be good to have as well. So what are we doing? Why is this important? Um, how do we do it? What are the, uh, what's the need behind it? What are the uh, ways to do it? And so on and so forth. So what's um, in, in a basic way, the knowledge about business analysis before we go and do it, right? Uh, it's not just about doing some reports, right? So it's, um, that's why it's, it's good to, to know about that as well. Great. And uh, tell us uh, what international certificate will our students get after successfully passing the exam at the end of the course? So thank you uh, for that question. So very important. Yes, the, the course is just a course. But in the end, what we want to see is uh, we want to become certified. And uh, once we pass the PL300 exam, um, the certification that you get is Microsoft Certified Power BI Data Analyst associate. So associate is a second level uh, certification. You can see there are two stars there. Um, so Power BI is not considered a basic certificate, but it's an associate level, so a bit more advanced. Um, so it's, it's a very well uh, renowned and uh, recognized certificate, uh, very well known by different companies and, and very useful for uh, getting a good job. Great. 
and uh, what job positions are suitable for specialists who just completed uh, this course? Yeah, well, as I said, uh, having the certificate, um, it's about business analytics. So, um, well, you can become a business analyst, right? Um, that's That will be um, the, the basic. From there on, uh, you can continue improving your knowledge on the Power Platform, and you can become a consultant, you can become a developer uh, or administrator for the platform. Um, and finally, in essence, um, and that's a master certification, it's a Power Platform Solution Architect. Now, that would be getting to a business and, and giving them the whole solution that they can implement uh, for their business to, to work in a specific way and get that Power Platform in the best possible way for them. Um, so yeah, that would be the goal. Um, but definitely starting with business analysts and other forms of analytics that you can do um, in positions um, in any reporting department, definitely they will need that. Thank you very much. And uh, what can be the next steps for the students after they take this course? Right. So, well, Power BI, as I mentioned, is part of the Power Platform from Microsoft. And the Power Platform is a part of different items. So there are Power Apps. Um, there is a the online Azure part that it's uh, very powerful. Um, so I would recommend really to, if you haven't had it before, to go to the Power Platform fundamentals. So learn not only about Power BI, but the whole platform and the capability that it has. Then from there on, again, talking about the developer, so Power Platform Developer Associate, again, it's another exam uh, that can be taken and, and a certificate that can be taken. Um, the Power Automate, so there is a lot of automation in the Power Platform that can happen. So automatically you can do a lot of things based on data that you receive, based on notifications, based on alarms that you can set up and so on. So Power Automate is really, really great, uh, a great part of the platform to look at. Um, so there is the Power Automate RPA Developer Associate or the PA, PL500. Um, then the Power Platform Functional Consultant Associate. So again, if you want to go into the consulting business and you want to um, go to a business and consult them on how to implement Power Platform for their needs and based on their needs, um, you can go with the PL200 as well. And finally, the biggest one, which is the expert, um, is the Microsoft Certified Power Platform Solution Architect Expert. Now that will require that you mostly have also the rest of the of the items. So because it requires a really broad knowledge mm -hmm. of the Power Platform in order to become a solution architect. So this is pretty much the top that you can get. Um, but definitely start with the fundamentals. Um, add the fundamentals to your um, to your portfolio. Thank you very much for your time and this valuable explanation related to the course. We hope that the information you provided will be useful for our students and will help them make the right decisions about uh, their applying. Thank you again. We look forward to seeing you in the upcoming course. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Looking forward to all of the trainees. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.